these folks want to know, like, what is your credibility? Like, how did this even come to be? And pretty much, who are you? So I just want to take a few minutes, just really honestly sharing a little bit about how I even got into real estate. And maybe at the end, we'll share a couple of fun facts. Hey, friends, I'm Rosemary Lewis, your homegirl, and I'm so excited that you are here. I do not care what it looks like on Instagram or HGTV. This whole being a realtor thing is not for the faint at heart. In 2017, I quit my job as a teacher to follow my real estate dreams and quickly found myself overwhelmed and struggling. Fast forward to today. Not only have I been recognized as one of the leaders in our industry, I have actually grown a business that I absolutely love. I don't care if you're a brand new agent trying to figure out how to get started or a veteran feeling overwhelmed and just stuck. I was just like you and I totally get it. Many times I wish there was someone that I could just talk to about all the challenges I was facing. And that is why I created this space just for you. Like best friends do, I'm giving you all the tea related to navigating and thriving in these real estate streets. If I can do it, guess what? That's proof that you can too. Everything's better with friends, so let's succeed together. Welcome to the Real Estate Bestie Podcast. Hey, Bestie. Welcome to episode number 138. And admittedly, I'm a little late (laughs) recording this episode because I think that it is time that I give you a proper introduction to me, your real estate bestie. Now, I don't know if you have been rocking with us on the podcast for all 138 episodes. If so, I appreciate you. Or maybe you're like, girl, I just found you. Somebody just sent over your podcast and I'm here. Listen, bestie, I appreciate you just as much. Or if you found me on the YouTube or the Instagram or whatever brought you here, I am so excited that you are here. And here is what I realized here recently because I was having a conversation with a bestie in the DMs and she was asking me a lot of basic questions that I just assume y'all know about me, right? I assume that you already know these things. So you know what? Let's have a little story time. Let's have a little story time. And let me share with you just how I went from being scary school teacher to what is now your real estate bestie. But before I get into it, let me just tell you something. Y'all, I am off of the best weekend that I've had in a very long time. And it is a testament to things that I share with you and that I've shared with you before about just shaking up your environment, getting outside of your own way and and just, you know, really, really get in the room and having different experiences. And this was not like a business thing, but y'all, I just got back from a vacation. Now, if you don't know what a vacation is, it's pretty much a vacation with your bae, okay? So my husband turned... who. Oh, Y'all, he is 46. Oh my goodness. Look, y'all know we go off of presidents over, over here. So I guess he's in his Joe Biden year, okay? This is this is what's happening. He is in his Joe Biden year, just turned 46. And generally for my husband's birthday, we typically travel because that's just how the homie gets down. Like he just always wants to be on somebody's island, on somebody's boat. And luckily we've been able to do that for the past couple of years. But y'all, this year... It's just been busy. And quite honestly, I'm just going to raise my hand and say that the real estate bestie retreat on top, you know, planning the retreat for for the besties has been really top priority in in, in terms of my budget, um, in terms of my mindset. And I just looked up and I was like, oh, my gosh, we really hadn't planned anything for his birthday. And he was being very gracious, you know, but, but you know, you know how that gracious is. It's like, you know, we ain't really got to do nothing. We can just do some little, little laid back, little low key, just around here, go to dinner or something. But because my husband's, one of his love languages is truly quality time. And I just know that both of us have such forward facing businesses. We've learned early on in our marriage that we definitely thrive when we make time to get away, to shift our environment 
and to just spend time together, right? So a couple days before his birthday, about a week before, I made the suggestion like, hey, you know, we were trying to, we actually were just going to say, forget it and go to Mexico, right? But weather wasn't all that great when we looked at it. So we decided, you know what, let's just get in the car. We're going to go up to Austin, Texas, because we live in Dallas. And we're just going to have, you know, a no expectation weekend together. And y'all, it was the best thing. And I'm not going to go into crazy detail, but I will just say this is that sometimes if you're feeling stale and whether that's still in a relationship or still in your business or still in your mindset, even there is so much to be said about getting out of your everyday routine, getting out of your everyday environment. And these past couple of days just definitely showed me that. And even though, you know, like, honestly, when I look at everything on our plates, everything that we got going on, we didn't necessarily have the time to take away, but we made the time, right? We made the margin in our budget. We made the margin in our time. And I'm just so happy that we did. And I'm just going to encourage you, you know, to, to look at that and look at your life and where are the areas that you may be feeling kind of, ugh? maybe you need to shake some things up, right? And change of an environment, it can come as easy as you all know, I'm really, really good about making sure that I do a daily outside walk. I really like when I'm at my best, I'm going outside for a walk every single day, but at least four to five times a week, because just getting outside, just breathing some fresh air is such a mood booster. And when you can do it, like when you can actually hop on an airplane or get in a car or like actually just go somewhere and do something different, it is amazing what it does for your mental health. And like y'all literally, I've kind of been not I haven't been struggling, but I've been in the minutia in the planning of the retreat that there are certain aspects that I just didn't have the brain capacity, I want to say to actually tackle and literally like just shifting our environment. I was on the way back today. My husband was driving and like I whipped out my laptop and like all of these ideas started flowing. Um, and I know it's because we made the time to get away. So I'm just going to encourage you to just see when you can do that. And if you think that getting away and getting into a room with your besties for a business revival, right, to change the environment where we're not only sharing all the business secrets, but where we are honoring God and really seeking his will for our business. Listen, as of the date I'm recording this podcast, we have a handful of tickets left for the Real Estate Bestie Retreat. And I know that it's just the environment and the energy shift that you will need. So definitely check that out at rosemarylewis.com forward slash retreat. Okay, so let's get into what I want to talk to you about today. And full disclosure, y'all, on the next podcast, I am going to record a podcast all about buyer agency agreements and more importantly, what you need to include in a buyer's consultation. And obviously that's coming at the hem of what, you know, everything that's going down with the National Association of Realtors. I was going to sit down and talk about that today. But here's the thing. I know y'all probably sick of talking about NAR and everything that's going on. We are still getting so much information on a daily basis. So I said, let's just like, let's take a little break. <laughs> like listen to all them other podcasts that's talking and all the other masterminds. Like I probably have no lie. 87 invitations to masterminds where everybody is pretty much saying the same doggone thing, which is they don't know what's going to happen. So I'm not going to speculate. I will repeat what I said to you a couple episodes ago. I'm going to link it. Like, I don't want y'all to be worried. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. But, you know, do we have to pivot? Yeah, we're going to have to pivot. And I'm going to talk to you if you are not already doing buyers consultations. First of all, it's okay. We're going to we're going to start off from the fresh foot right now. And in the next long episode, we're going to talk about what you need to include in your buyer consultation. And I'm actually going to give you an opportunity to check out a training that I did on um, having a buyer's consultation. But for today, how about we get to know each other a little bit, bestie? Um, So like I said, it's interesting to me because every now and again, I will get a DM or for my local real estate besties, besties that are local to the Dallas Fort Worth area, y'all will send me a mess or will, you know, say something to me. And it reminds me that Rosemary, everyone does not know how you became their real estate bestie, right? Because maybe a friend sent you 
send the podcast to them or share your YouTube or something like that. But like these folks want to know, like, what is your credibility? Like, how did this even come to be? And pretty much who are you? So I just want to take a few minutes, just really honestly sharing a little bit about how I even got into real estate. And maybe at the end, we'll share a couple of fun facts. And I would love for you to hop into my DMs and share with me some fun facts about you. So a little bit about me and my real estate journey. And I'm really going to try and not make this long winded. But like, hey, here, here we go. Because you know, real estate is a story. So y'all, long story short, it's not gonna be short. But long story (laughs) is that my husband, Corey, before we were married, Corey got into real estate hmm, back in like, let me see, I'm dating myself. Oh, actually, I'm gonna tell you when he got in real estate, our son will be 24 years old in May. And Corey actually got into real estate in 2000, in the year 2000, when our son was being born. And at that time, my husband was working for, he was working for his uncle. His uncle had a lot of restaurants in the Chicagoland area where we're from. And my my husband managed one of the restaurants. And there was this guy who used to come in named Bill. And he was, he was kind of mesmerized by Bill because he said, you know, sometimes Bill would come in and he would be dirty, like having work clothes and then he'd have on a suit. And he came into the restaurant a few times a week until one day my husband asked him, Bill, what do you actually do? So Bill told him, he said, you know, I am a real estate investor and I actually flip houses. So when I am coming into the restaurant and I have on my dirty work clothes, I've been working on one of my deals and when I am dressed up in a suit, I've actually been at a real estate closing. And like my husband's kind of like low key adding up this man's money. Like, hmm, you're in a suit a couple times a week. It must be something to this. And Bill being as gracious as he was, he ended up becoming an unofficial mentor for my husband. And well, he wasn't even my husband at the time. He was my baby daddy, truth be told. So, so he became an unofficial mentor and Corey started getting into the the real estate game he partnered with a friend and they started doing flips you know a couple of year and after a couple of years a light bulb went off to Corey and he was like hey his frat brother was actually a real estate broker he worked with the company for about a year then went off and opened his own brokerage and I remember like my husband drove me to his friend's house And they had like came up with this whole plan on how I was going to go get my real estate license. And for the sole purpose of, at least that's what they presented to me. Like you should get your license so that you can list Corey's houses for him. And here's the thing, y'all. You know how you've been in that, that, I'm I'm talking, we're talking like this early 2000s love. This like, you know, jagged edge, meet me at the altar with your white dress type love, like, you know, like all of the the good R&B, like I love that man like that, right? I did not want to be nobody's realtor. As a matter of fact, from the day that I can remember ever wanting to work, I remember that I wanted to be a teacher, right? I wanted, like I had just a surface level reason for wanting to be a teacher because I just loved, like I loved being my teacher's helper when I was in elementary school. I love the feel of a teacher's guide. Don't let a teacher let me grade a spelling test. Like what? Like I loved it, loved it, loved it. But then I had a heartstring connection with being a teacher, right? I have shared with you all on the podcast before when I was in eighth grade, my brother was actually murdered in twofold. Like my, he was 15 years old. He was murdered by a 14 year old. And the way that my teachers, I went to St. Sabina in Chicago, St. Sabina Elementary, And the way that my teachers loved me through that experience, aside from like, and not even just that, like they have been, I went to the elementary school from kindergarten through eighth grade. So just the relationships that I had built with the adults that I could tell, they were obviously not there for the paycheck. They were there teaching in the inner city, us really, really not so great kids because they truly had a heart for youth. And the way they poured into me and loved me, even before my brother's murder and after, I will forever remember. I will forever remember Mr. Harris. And y'all right now, Mr. Harris is my, he's my homeboy. He actually, he's my homeboy. He really is. He's the principal at Whitney Young right now in Chicago, the iconic Whitney Young High School, Ricky Harris. I will always remember the way Cynthia Thomas loved me. 
Sylvester Johnson. Like I remember these teachers and I'm like, yes, that is what I want to be for somebody. And then on the flip side, I would think about the boy who killed my brother, right? I would think like if he would have had, like in my mind, the only way that he could actually have the capacity to take a life is that he hasn't received love like this. And maybe his mom and daddy didn't weren't able to give it to him. But this is why I need to be a teacher, right? Because I need to love kiddos well. I need to impart. And this was even before I had enough sense to even think about Jesus. But I'm like, I need to just be a light in very dark places. And so my homies, while they're talking to me about becoming a real estate agent, I'm like, the math is not mathing. I don't want to do it. However, I love that man. I love that man. I I loved him. I still love him. So I did it. (laughs) Okay. So I got my real estate license, but my heart was never in it. I, I just want to say that. And without me going into detail, like I will just tell you that my heart was never in it. However, I was good at it. I was good at it back then, but that was not the desire. Like I wasn't a good fit. I was literally doing it like because my husband, my boyfriend, husband, I forget what he was by the time I quit because he wanted me to do it. And it was about money more than anything for me. And when anything is only about money or pleasing somebody else, it's just not, it's just not going to be a go. Okay. It wasn't a go for me. So when the recession happened, right, y'all remember what happened? Or maybe you're young and you don't remember, but back in 07, 08, it got real hot in these real estate streets <laughs> because especially where we were in Illinois, there was a recession. There were so many foreclosures that in, in a job that I already didn't want to do in order to be successful in it, I was going to have to work a whole lot harder than I was willing to work. And quite honestly, the media punked me out of the market, right? I didn't even try. I saw all of those, like the same type of headlines we're watching right now that only evoke fear. Those very fearful headlines literally punked me out of the business. And I thought that I would never, ever return. Um, But you know what they say? Show God your plans and he will laugh at them. I think that's what it says. It's not in the Bible, but that's just what the people say. So fast forward, y'all, to after a series of events, even at the time, at the recession time, my husband, he lost so many properties that he was flipping. Um, We had to foreclose several homes. Like I just, it, it just, it felt like the weight of the world was on our shoulders and we just couldn't even breathe. So he actually got out of the real estate business at that time. And we pursued another business, okay? And I didn't want to pursue it, but I married a serial entrepreneur, so here we are. So my husband has this other business, and as we are, like, climbing out of the hole that was created for us or that we created during those recession years, y'all, he got the itch to get back in real estate. And I'm like, this boy, like, ugh. So y'all, he, so fast forward, if you, if you still with me, this is probably like 2012, 2013. We are definitely married now. We are definitely doing much better. We have our second son and Corey, you know, I'm one of those people that I'm like, don't rock the boat. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But he was itching, itching, itching to get back in real estate. And he did. And y'all, I remember though, this was one of those moments that as a wife, I was not nearly as supportive as I should have been in his life. But I remember like when he, you know, him and his friend, they did this flip. And when they finally got a call for an offer, it was the worst offer in the world. (laughs) It was the worst offer in the world. It was not, you know, it was not the, the expected outcome or the expected return on their investment that he thought he would get. But even more than that, I remember though him negotiating that deal, like just how excited he was. Like I saw a passion in him that I hadn't seen since before the recession. And though I was scared out of my wits for us to be in real estate, I did not want him to be in real estate. I had to recognize that this was definitely a gifting for him. And like, you know, and and now I can see that this is something God had called him to. And but I just didn't know how I fit in it, because to be completely honest, I was fearful. I was fearful not only of failing. I was to be if I'm honest, I was fearful of what would happen if we actually were successful in business. Right. I just didn't know what that would look like. And as a result, he just did not have my my complete support. Like he had that like arm's length support. Like, okay, you do you. 
boo boo but like just don't bring it over here because I'm going to be the stable one right I have been on this roller coaster with you and real estate like I almost felt like real estate was like this this abusive boyfriend that was coming back in our lives but I'm going to protect us I'm going to have this job I'm going to keep my insurance like okay it is what it is so fast forward y'all to we are now living in Texas that's a whole other we got to have a whole different podcast talk about how we end up in Texas but we are in Texas I am teaching I love my school I love my school I love teaching in Texas I love the community. Like, I'm just so grateful to God that we're here. And my husband now is doing real estate full time and just trying to figure out his way as an investor in this market, which looks very different. And I'm not necessarily discouraging him, but I definitely am like, you know, like keeping the safety net in terms of what we got going on. Like, I'm gonna make sure I keep my my teaching job I'm gonna keep this insurance, like just, you know, I, I'm, I'm moving very cautiously. He's just, he, I thought he was moving foolishly. Now I can look back and say like, he definitely was making faith moves, but that that's just what had happened. So here's the very funny thing. There is so much like, you know how they say, and it, this is actually in the Bible, life and death is in the power of the tongue or there's life and uh, yeah, how would they say it? I will, I will quote it correctly and put it in the note section somewhere. So y'all, what's funny is anytime, like when I'm teaching or with my teaching team, when we would have hard days and we're just joking around, I would joke with them all the time and say something along the lines of like, well, when I quit and become a real estate agent, well, when I quit and become a realtor, like when I quit y'all to be a real, go do real estate. Now I had, again, no inkling, like no desire to do real estate. But the more that my husband was getting involved, you know, I'm involved in his conversations. You know, he would talk things through with me. My real estate brain was working, but I was not willing, if that makes sense. So, y'all, one day we're at church during a time, during a season in my life where I was really struggling with a lot of things. And I was struggling because I don't know about you, Bestie, but, you know, have you ever had things happen in your life and you're like, man, if this happens, then I would be fine. And and for me, if I'm being honest, a lot of it was around my marriage. (laughs) A lot of it was around my relationship. Like if he would just do this, I would be fine. Or if we would be fine or if money wasn't an issue, you know, if we could pay all our bills, I would be fine. And what had happened was a lot of the things that I thought would bring me contentment and fulfillment they were coming to pass like me and Corey were in a good place. You know, we were able to pay our bills and have some left over for day night and these little staycations. You know, the kids were fine. We're in a great environment in Texas, but I still felt an emptiness, right? There was still something just missing from my life. And yeah, what was missing y'all was there was a wrestling period of me fully submitted myself to God, right? I had been saved for most of my life. I accepted the Lord as my savior, but actually wanting to be in relationship with him and living a life that honors him. I was so holding on to my yes, because I was so afraid of what I would have to give up and not realizing that I had, you know, I didn't have the world to gain, but I, I had you know, freedom in Christ Jesus, which again is a whole nother podcast. So during this time in my life, I'm really wrestling. And I finally, you know, after, you know, all these like sob sessions in my closet by myself with Jesus started to finally surrender myself and surrender my life to him, not knowing what that looks like, knowing that I got so much unresolved trauma that I need to unpack. But I'm just like, okay, Lord, here's my yes. I don't know what this means. I know that it's scary, but here it is, right? So not long after I'm going, starting to go through this kind of inward thing with the Lord, I'm sitting at the balcony of our church and our pastor is preaching a sermon and he is referencing the part in Genesis when Abraham is told to sacrifice Isaac. And if you know that story, you know that Abraham was, you know, was promised that he would be the father of nations. He tried to take, he and his wife, they tried to take matters into their own hands and, you know, just really not trusting God at his word. Then finally he has Isaac, you know, who is going to be through his, through where his, his generations, where these nations are going to come through. And the Lord told him to sacrifice them. 
And my pastor was preaching about obedience and what struck me and what still continues to strike me in that episode or in that part of the Bible was how Abraham was immediately obedient. In that moment, y'all, literally, I heard the Lord audibly say, go help. I knew what go help meant. Don't tell me, don't ask me how I knew because me being a real estate agent was not on the table, but I knew that I was supposed to get out here and become a real estate agent. And at the time, I thought that that meant to help my family, like to be my husband's helpmate. I told Corey about it. He immediately signed me up for classes. And y'all, within six months, I was given my resignation for teaching with like zero dollars saved, zero, you know, I, I did not have a plan. All I knew is that God was calling me to do this thing, right? crazy I know right and and I just want to point out this is so like totally not like my normal personality remember I am like the strategic the saver the person who always wants to exert some control so from the very beginning of my juncture in this career especially on round two it was nothing but the Lord I'm telling you that so let me fast forward a little bit so as you can imagine with that lovely or not so lovely laid out plan that I had which was no plan my first year was hard like my first year in real estate it was so hard but y'all some way somehow I ended up on a team again divine intervention and on this team I closed something like 30 deals my first year okay and definitely I, I learned so much from my team lead I learned so much from the people that I was in partnership with, but a good, like when I look at that first year, a good part of that was just me showing up, showing up when I didn't have it figured out, showing up when I didn't know what to say, showing up when I, you know, felt like I wasn't good enough, you know, getting in the right rooms, investing in myself, you know, consistently affirming myself in the word and not that I was literally like, I I was not that smart, but just God was just continuing to press things on me. And let me tell you what happened. So with my team, I ended up joining, my team ended up joining EXP Realty. And we were like some of the early adopters of EXP Realty. And we used to have these, if you know anything about EXP Realty, it is an agent, agent-centric, agent agent-owned brokerage. And don't worry, I'm not about to give you a whole spiel about joining EXP. But back then we used to have lunch and learns to teach people about, we would teach a skill and then we would tell them about EXP. So Long story short, y'all, I was starting to, because I am a natural teacher, I was starting to become a leader on my team. I didn't realize that I was becoming a leader and showing leadership qualities. I just thought that I was being a natural team, uh, like a team player. And we had a lunch and learn schedule where we invited all these other realtors to come. And my team lead was the one who normally did like this teaching session, but she had a conflict. She has scheduled herself to be in two places at once. And she said to me, Rosemary, you should do it, right? Like you should, you should teach the skill. And I want to say like the name of the presentation was how to get 20 listings in 30 days. And I was like, well, I've never done that. I can't teach anybody how to get 20 listings in 30 days. I haven't done it. And she was like, well, look at what you just did. And I had recently, like a week before, I got five listings in five days, like literally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I got five listings. She's like, just change the name because it's the same thing. Like the same thing that I did to get 20 listings in 30 days, you did to get five listings in five days. And it, it is a million percent of value add to anyone in the room. And I never forget, I was so nervous because even though I was doing the work, even though I had the results, I still was not confident on who I was in my skin. But guess what? There was nobody else to do it. I did not want to let my team lead down and I did it. Okay. I did it and I taught it. And I never forget when I taught that first class, as I was teaching it to a group of about 15 agents, I remember thinking like, wait, you're still a teacher. You are still a teacher. The content may look different. Your students may look different, but you still get to teach. And like, I literally, like I was teaching that class and at at the end, I almost burst out and start crying because I was like, the Lord will make room for your gifts exactly where he calls you to be. 
And that was literally one of the the most pivotal moments in my life. And it started because somebody saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and she challenged me. And as a result of that challenge, y'all, we have 138 episodes. So from there, you know, that was, oh goodness, that had to be like 2018. I became an independent agent in 2019, just outgrew the opportunity of being on the team. The team was a great fit for me for those first couple of years, but again, just kind of outgrew that opportunity. And by 2020, the pandemic year, I will never forget. I was so nervous and I, I, I can remember this clearly because by now, you know, I'm showing up on YouTube um, to teach buyers and sellers. I will actually even link my first YouTube video to this podcast. It'll be available in the show notes for you. But I remember, you know, showing up on YouTube because I wanted to teach like that sparked the bug on how do I become a teacher in this space. And as a result, I started, you know, having agents reach out to me to just try to figure out like how I was finding success. Because in 2020, y'all, when the world shut down, and when I thought all hope was lost, that was the year that I hit what I thought was my lifetime goal in real estate. And I sold $10 million on my own without, you know, buying leads, like without doing any of the things that all of the people said that you had to do in order to gain 10 million, you know, to earn 10 million in sales. I was able to do that the pandemic year and have pretty much doubled that every year since then. So, so why am I telling you this story? First of all, I just feel like we need to know each other. Okay. We need to know each other, but I am a firm believer. You know, I know that you all like to, to see receipts. I love to see where people are now, but there's so much power. Sammy said it on our last episode, you know, there's so much power in following along with other people's story. And as I sit here today and I record this episode, I just think back to that person who was sitting at the top of that balcony when she audibly heard the Lord say, go help. And we are literally less than two weeks away from the real estate bestie retreat. I hear go help so differently now because at that time I thought it was just about me and I thought it was just about my family. Uh, I thought that my success, my success was contingent on my obedience. But now I know that my obedience meant so much more because it brought you here in this moment right now. So I just wanted to share that with you because I don't know where you are in your story, right? I don't know if you're at the point where you are, you know, your your fear is trying to, trying to take you out. I don't know if you're at the point of, you know what, you, you're, you're realizing how you get to use your other gifts, even in this industry. I don't know if you're at the point where God is even using you to elevate and empower others. I don't know. But what I do know is that there is a plan and a purpose for your life. And it is no coincidence that you are listening to this and listening to me right now. And I just want to encourage you wherever you are in that part of your story. I'm so grateful that you are here. And I'm just so grateful of the gifts that that you have, the gifts that you possess. And I am a witness, like if nothing else, when you hear my story, I just want you to be empowered to know if God can use her, right, in this way, we got a hundred women coming to Dallas. You could be one, by the way. We probably have about five tickets left by the time you listen to this. Go to rosemarylewis.com forward slash retreat. But if God can use me, oh my goodness, can you imagine what he's planning to do with you? But you got to be willing to give that yes, right? It was all contingent on that initial yes. And it's just so beautiful that, you know, even when I was struggling with the yes, when I was struggling with fully submitting and fully being obedient, he already knew that in this moment, we would be sharing this time here together. And that just makes me so happy and so grateful. So, all right. So that's it, Bestie. Uh, I think that is a proper introduction to me, your real estate bestie. But you know what? What would be even better is for us to meet face to face, to have a big old hug and to just get to know each other in a real life personal way. If you are listening to this podcast and the retreat has not happened yet, listen, get in the door. If you can get in the door, I'm going to encourage you to make it happen 
because something happens, something shifts when you get into the right environment. And I am convinced, yeah, I'm not even sleeping at night because I'm so convinced on how right this environment will be. So head on over to rosemarylewis.com forward slash retreat or realestatebestyretreat.com to secure one of the final tickets. I hope it don't say sold out when you go over there. I really hope, but you gotta be speedy. Go ahead and secure your seat. And if for whatever reason you have missed out, make sure that we still connect with each other. Stay connected with me. Go to join our list. We'll put the link here where you can be a part of our list. So every time we do something, you will know absolutely everything about it. All right, I'll talk to you later next week, bestie. Bye now. If you enjoyed this episode and you have a real life bestie that you think it would resonate with, y'all do me a favor, go ahead and hit that share button because you know what? We are better together. Make sure you share the podcast and I appreciate your reviews. I appreciate you giving me five stars more than you know. I'll talk to you next week.